All right, now we know how to find the inverse of a two by two matrix. And we did that two different ways with this matrix A here. And we found that the inverse of matrix A was uh, this, this matrix over here, zero, negative a third, one, two thirds. And so now what I'm gonna show you is how to find the inverse of a matrix if, if it's bigger than two by two. I'm gonna do this, uh, this new process first on a two by two matrix, just to convince you that it works because we already know what the inverse of this matrix A is. So if I do this new process on this, on this um, matrix whose inverse we know and we get the same thing, then hopefully that will be sufficiently convincing that the process works. Um, the, the way we've done it so far only works on two by two matrices, the, the, uh, at least the algorithm. This technique will work on any square matrix two by two or larger, if it has an inverse, if it is invertible. Well, we know this one is, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna use this one um, to do this experiment, first of all. So we have two, one, negative three, zero. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create something of an invert, uh, an, an augmented matrix where the other half, if you will, the other half of my matrix is the identity matrix appropriate to the size of the matrix that I'm working with here. What I'm gonna do next is perform elementary row operations on, on this matrix so that the, the, the left-hand side of it here, the, this first four entries, which reflect matrix A, so that this becomes the identity matrix, all right? So I think what I'll do to start with is multiply row one by one half and put that into row one because I want a one in this position here. So let's see what happens when I do that. One half times two is one. One half times one is one half. One half times negative three is negative three halves and one half times zero is zero. So I'll get one half. Nope, sorry. <laughs> I get one here and one half here. Negative three halves here and zero halves are zero here. But that's not the entire matrix now. I need to do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna multiply one half by one by zero, by zero, and by one half. All right, now in uh, elementary row operations in, in Gaussian elimination form, in Gaussian elimination tradition, the next thing I need to do is make this entry a zero. So I'm going to multiply row one by positive three halves and add it to row two and put that into row two's position. So I have positive three halves times one, which is three halves, plus negative three halves, which is zero. I'm not changing row one here, just row two. And in, in uh, the first position here, I had three halves times row one, which is three halves plus negative three halves. And I have three halves times one half, which is three fourths, add that to zero and I get three fourths. And I have the same value here and the same value here. So I'm gonna get the same result, three fourths. And I have three halves times zero plus one half, which is one half. Okay, now I have a one here and a zero in every entry below it. The next thing is to take the next pivot and turn that into a one by scaling it. So I'm gonna take row two and multiply it by four thirds. And that's gonna become my new row two. So I make, I'm only changing uh, row two here, not row one. So I'll recopy row one. Okay, so I'm gonna have four thirds times zero, times three fourths, times three fourths, times a half, and that's what's gonna go here. I'm just scaling. Four thirds times zero is zero. Four thirds times three fourths is one. Four thirds times three fourths is one. And four thirds times one half is four sixths, which is two thirds. 
All right. And so now I have a one in this position and a zero below it. Now I have a one in this position. I need these, I need a zero above it. So I'm going to take row two. I'm going to multiply it by negative one half. And I'm going to I'm going to add that to row one, and that's going to go in row one. I'm going to sh shrink my screen again just a little bit because I don't really have enough room to whoops to get that in here, not to be too small. There we go. All right, uh, so I'm going to, what did I say I was gonna do? Let's see, I have a one and a zero. I have a one, I need a zero here. So I'm taking a negative a half times this and adding it to that. So negative a half times zero. I'm not changing row two this time. I'm using row two, but I'm not changing it. Uh, negative a half times zero plus one. Negative a half times one is negative a half plus positive a half, zero. Same thing in the next entry. I have the same values here. I have the same values here. I'm doing the same thing to these two things and adding them to the same things here. So I'm gonna get the same value in that last position. And then negative one half, where am I? Negative one half times two thirds is negative one third. And I'm gonna add that to zero. So I get negative one third. And now what you can see is that I've got an identity matrix here and I've got a inverse here. So this is another method by which we can uh, find the inverse of a matrix A. And this is just an algorithm that we are quite familiar with these elementary row operations now. But what we've done is we've started with matrix A and we've concatenated it with the identity matrix. And what we've ended up with is the identity matrix concatenated with the inverse of matrix A. And so this has been our goal here is to find this matrix here and we found it. Let's take a minute now and make sure that this works on larger matrices. I'm gonna to go to a new slide and I'll do this with a three by three matrix. So if I've been given matrix A here and asked to find a inverse, if it exists, then I can set this up the same way as I did the previous in the previous slide by starting with matrix A, one, one, negative one, Now, I've got lucky again here. I've got this matrix with a lot of zeros and ones in it. So my, my uh, life is, is gonna be a little bit easier. And actually I've drawn that as a, a matrix and I don't really wanna close that yet. So let me erase that. And I'm gonna augment or concatenate here with the identity matrix. And this time I'm using the identity matrix in, in three dimensions because that is the size of matrix A. If this is a a three by three matrix, then I have to concatenate with a three by three identity matrix. And then I'm gonna perform elementary row operations on the entire matrix, which essentially has the effect of pushing through, uh, making this side the identity matrix and pushing through, the, through those operations into the right-hand side. And that's what produces the, the uh, inverse. So let's start with our row reduction here, we have a one in this position and zeros below it. So we're actually done with that reduction. Uh, we don't need to do any row operations to turn this into a one or to turn anything below it into a zero. So we'll go to the next column, go to the next pivot. That is also already a one and everything below it is a zero. And our third pivot is also a one. So we've actually done the forward elimination or we don't need to do the forward elimination for this matrix, but we do still need to do the backward elimination. So I'm gonna take, because I want this to be the identity matrix, right? The formula or the abbreviation, I guess you could say, is that uh, the matrix the matrix A, when you multiply it by, or sorry, when you perform row operations on the concatenated matrix A with the identity matrix is going to give you the identity matrix concatenated with A inverse. So I'm starting with A and I'm concatenating the identity matrix. 
and I'm going to push through until the left hand side is the identity matrix and the right hand side will be the inverse. So the first thing I'm going to need to do here is to take this one and use it to turn this three into a zero. So that means I need to take the one in row three and multiply it by negative three to get negative three so that when I add that to row two, I get zero. And then I'm going to put that into row two. Now, I'm not changing row one. I'm not working with row one at all here. And I'm not changing row three. I'm using row three, but I'm not changing it. Okay, so I'll take negative three times zero, which is zero, add it to zero and get zero. So zero plus zero. Negative three times zero plus one is one. So a zero here and a one here. Negative three times one is th negative three plus three is zero. I gotta keep going here. Negative three times zero plus zero. Negative three times zero plus one. Oops. I wrote a zero when I meant to write a one. And then negative three times one, sorry, negative three times one plus zero is negative three. All right, and again, continuing now with the, I missed one actually. No, I'm, I'm okay, I'm working with this far right pivot first and then I'll work my way back. So now I've used row three to change row two. Now I'm gonna use row three to change row one. And it looks like in this case, I can literally just add these two numbers together to get zero. So I can add these two rows together to get my new row one. So this time, I'm gonna have a new row one. I'm using row two, but not changing it. And row three is not involved at all. So I'll copy that down as well. And I've just observed that what I need to do is add row three to row one and make that my new row one. So I'm literally going to add row three to row one and put it here in each position. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus one is one. One plus negative one is zero. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus zero is zero. And one plus zero is one. And I have one last, I believe it's my last uh, operation to do, which is to use row two to turn row one's position two into a zero because I have a pivot here and I don't have a zero above it yet. So my last um, elementary row operation is going to take row two, the opposite of row two, um, and add it to row one and put that in the position of row one. Let me shrink my screen again. In case you're wondering, I've, I've gotten used to working with a larger iPad and I got a new iPad and so the screen is a lot smaller than I'm used to working with. So I've, I've had a tendency of late to <laughs> um, run out of room on my screen. Um, so I am going to take the opposite of row two and add it to row one, the opposite of row two and add it to row one for each entry, the opposite of zero, the opposite of one, the opposite of, and so on. So, and again, let's see, I'm not changing row two. I'm using it, but not changing it. Not involving row three at all. But I'm taking the opposite of zero, which is zero, and adding it to one, which is one. The opposite of one is negative one. Add that to zero, and you, sorry, add that to one and you get zero. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1, and positive 3 plus 1 is 4. Now what I have on the left hand side here is the identity matrix for the dimension 3. I have i sub 3, and therefore what I have on the right hand side here is a inverse. So a inverse is the matrix 1, negative 1, 4, 0, 1, negative 3, 0, 0, 1. And we can confirm that by doing um, 
a i times uh, sorry a times a inverse which would be one one negative three zero one three where did I get negative three that's a negative one and zero zero one times one negative one four zero one negative three zero zero one and that's going to give me I wish I could show you what, what I do with my fingers, what I do with my hands when I'm doing these. I kind of run down, uh, I use my left index finger to trace across this line while I'm using my right index finger to trace down this line of numbers. And I do those at the same time. And if you do that enough, you start to develop a muscle memory for a row and a column. And um, anyway, it's something of a mnemonic that I use for myself. Anyway, I'm going to have uh, 1 plus 1, sorry, 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0 plus negative 1 times 0. Um, then I'm going to have, now I'm moving on to this column here. So my left index finger is going across here, and my right index finger is going down this column. Negative 1, and I'm in row 1, column 2, so I'm going to be in this position here. Uh, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, 1 times 1 is 1, negative 1 times 0 is 0. Now I'm in column 3. Row 1 in the first matrix uh, times uh, uh, column 3 in the second matrix. 1 times 4 plus 1 times negative 3 plus negative 1 times 1. All right, and now I'm ready to move on to this column, sorry, this row with each of the three columns. 0 times 1 is 0 plus 1 times 0 is 0 plus 3 times 0 is 0. Next column, 0 times negative 1, 1 times 1, and 3 times 0. And the last column with row 2 is 0 times 4 plus 0 times negative 3 plus 1 times 1. And lastly, I am now in row 3 with each of the three columns in the second matrix. I have 0 times anything plus 0 times anything plus 1 times 0. I forgot my pluses here and here. And then I'll have 0 times anything plus 0 times anything plus 1 times 0 and 0 times anything plus 0 times anything plus 1 times 1. And as you can see, when I do this uh, arithmetic, now I get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, which is the identity matrix. Now, it, by all rights, um, what I've done here is a, what I purport to be a, a inverse, and that has in fact given me i sub 3, but I should also check that a inverse a equals i sub 3 to be absolutely sure. The point of the video, however, is that uh, starting with a matrix A, concatenating that with the identity matrix appropriate to the right size, using elementary row operations to convert the left-hand side of that concatenated matrix so that the left-hand side is the identity matrix, results in a inverse. Okay?